I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at Select and Mask. Where is Select and Mask? What is Select and Mask? And some tips and tricks to using Select and Mask, your new favorite compositing tool. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. With that, let's take a look at what we have here. So first things first, where is Select and Mask? Also sometimes referred to as Refine Edge. You can access Select and Mask several different ways. First, you can choose Select, Select and Mask. You can press Control Alt R or Command Option R if on a Mac. You can enable a selection tool like Quick Selection and click Select and Mask in the upper options bar. And finally, you can always double click on a layer mask, which will either open Select and Mask or the Properties panel, which will contain a Select and Mask button. The Select and Mask tool is Photoshop's best and most powerful tool when it comes to photo compositing, in my opinion. This includes removing objects, subjects, and of course, hair from their original background. With several different settings to choose from, Select and Mask may seem a bit complicated, but I promise you, once you know what you're doing, you can extract whole subjects in less time than it takes to watch this video. So let's select Quick Select, hit Select Subject, though you can always use any form of quick selection, whichever works best for the image at hand, add a layer mask, and then enter Select and Mask. We are going to cover and set up our settings first, and then mask. So on the right here, you will notice several different brushes and selection tools. I always suggest doing your rough selections first before entering Select and Mask, even though you can do it inside Select and Mask. For me, it just seems a bit easier, a bit more intuitive and quicker. The brush we want to select is the Refine Edge brush, which is the second brush from the top. Now looking to the right, we start with the view mode. This allows you to choose how you view the mask being created. It's completely personal preference and will also change depending on the image and the selection. I also like to have both real-time refinement and high quality preview checked. If you do find that your computer lags a bit too much while refining your mask, you can always uncheck quality preview. Transparency controls how much of the original background peeks through. This is good for referencing what may uh, be being left out due to the refinement. Now, Refine Mode tells Photoshop what it should be considering when creating and refining the mask, object or color. This will change image to image, of course, and you can always try out both, see what works best. Edge detection further helps Photoshop figure out what it's exactly trying to mask. For me, I always check Smart Radius and set it to around 3 to 4 pixels. This gives Photoshop the ability to grab things like thin little hair strands or fur in this case. The earlier settings are what you are going to want to set up uh, before refining your mask, but before moving to your global refinements. So with our Refine Edge brush selected, let's drag the brush along the edges of the subject. Photoshop will start working its magic, matching edges and grabbing hair. If you need to adjust your brush, you can hit the left and right bracket key, just like with the paintbrush tool. If you need to remove an area you selected, hold Alt, click and drag. And if you want to undo whole swipes, you can always Control Z. Now for the global refinements, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the black and white view just so you can see what is happening a bit better. So first, smooth. Smooth smooths out your mask and can be good for getting rid of overly sharp edges or noisy selections. Second, feather feathers out the edges of the mask, just like the feather option in the mask properties panel or the various select and marquee tools. Since the feather option is in the mask's properties panel, I don't suggest using it here if you just want to soften an edge. The properties panel lets you change it as you go it's much more non-destructive. However, I do have a use for the feather option that I will cover here in a little bit. 
Contrast will do the opposite of feather and instead sharpen your mask, removing any soft edges. And finally, Shift Edge will shift the edge of the mask either inward or outward, which can be nice for getting rid of edges and leftover color. Which brings us to the output settings. Let's switch back to Onion Skin and talk about Decontaminate Color. Checking this will remove the fringe of color that tends to be left behind when using tools like Refine Edge. You can check and uncheck this as much as you'd like, but once you finalize the mask, it will be permanent. I'll show you why I never really use Decontaminate Color here in a moment. In the meantime, every image is different and these global refinements will change from scenario to scenario. In fact, a lot of the time I don't use them, especially when it comes to hair. It's all about personal preference, choosing the right tool for the job and getting to what you deem to be the best result for what you are working on. Now for some various tips and tricks. It doesn't matter how good Photoshop's AI gets, your eye will always be better. Refine Edge gets you close, but it's up to you to finish it off. So once you hit OK on a mask, zoom in nice and close, grab a brush and start to clean up the mask. Using black to grab some of the areas missed and white to fill in the areas where Refine Edge may have gotten a little overly excited. The longer you spend on a mask, the better it will be. I have a new subject here, so let's hop into Select and Mask and refine its edge just like before. With that done, unlike before, let's hit Decontaminate Color, getting rid of all that white fringe and then hit OK. Now at first glance this looks pretty great, right? Let's click Disable Layer Mask. As you can see, Decontaminate Color permanently edits your image. Now why is that an issue? Let's turn our mask back on and start to clean up our mask edges, as you should always do. The more you mask in, the more you might run into areas where the Decontaminate Color autofill gets interesting looking. Another great combo for getting rid of fringe colors that isn't on hair is to combine Feather, Contrast, and Shift Edge. First, add a bit of feather. Let's go with 2.8 pixels. Now, 45% contrast to sharpen the edges back up. This will get rid of any jaggedness on the edges. And finally, a touch of shift edge to get rid of any leftover white. This works great on smoother edges and anything without a lot of nooks and crannies or small details. And that is why I don't personally use global refinements on hair. For me, my main goal is to keep as many hair strands and flyaways as possible. The more you use global adjustments, the more detail you are likely to lose. And that is our brief but hopefully thorough look into Select and Mask. Remember, it's not just for hair or sharp selections. I love using Select and Mask to get soft, natural edges or to grab tiny little pieces of lint and thread on clothes, arm hair, all the little details that other people seem so desperate to get rid of for some reason. I think that about does it for today, so like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Or just say hi down in the comments, I love talking to everyone. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com, see you next time.